and sees is slow. RIS has the fixed format, but it has the variable one. RIS has few instructions, but it has many instructions. RIS is highly pipelined, but in SIS it is less pipelined. RIS architecture is not widely used, but at least 75% is used the SIS section. The difference between RIS and SIS is very important for your exam question point of view. This ripple carry adder is also important for your examination. The ripple carry adder is a digital circuit which is to produce an architecture of sum in two binary numbers. That means that in this adding section we have the value of B and value of A. By the additional section the result of this first adder is also taken to the next one. From this diagram we can easily see that first of in first error section we include the value of C1 and whatever it is I don't know are added the value in this ad full error section and then when we get the output the result is moving to the next one as an input that is how this this result of this first full error is uh, putting a very much good value and effort on the second error then its, va uh, its result is again affecting on the third one then it is affecting again on the fourth one that is how the ripple carry adder works operation is active when the signal is low this diagram is used for addition subtraction unit an architecture method of implementing subtraction is to form the two complement of negative subtraction and addition if the mean sorry for that moving to the next in this section we can easily say that here we are getting the inputs from the previous adder as like as the ripple carry adder but in this section we have a general input like as we are taking input same for all full adders computer architecture section in this section we have here the multiplexing section the register section and the multiplexing section again of in here we have the unit the data path is a network of function and storage unit capacity of performing the certain operations on data words this diagram is important for your exam point of view. I am just um, discussing with you about what is important in this computer architecture lecture. You could, uh, you can d uh, have the d brief idea of this by Wikipedia. Here are descriptions on resist, uh, register files, the function unit the ALU unit we have already discussed about the control unit we have already discussed about uh, in this diagram section we have the input in this section we have input from R and S then we generated a value A plus B which is moving to the this section which is RF in RF section here write A read A and read B is performing after that the result is moving to the next one by multiplexing that we are moving this to the F1 section and another one to the F2 section then the 
additional overflow is moving to the overflow section and then it is related again with the P section and Q section. That is how this knows what the result is. the general structure of hardware control unit here we have the status signal then the sequential logic then the control signals which are connected with the instruction registers here we have the general structure of microprocessor control unit here we have the control memory which is connected with address logic with unidirectional section and this address logic is connected with the status signal then instruction registers is giving input to the address logic and the micro and the micro uh, structure of registers is also giving input to the address logic and also to the decoder and then finally generates a control signal that is how the general structure of microprocessor control unit works This diagram is on GCD processor. GCD in, in this processor section, we have two methods, methods 1 and methods 2. By this diagram, we will describe that one. We are taking values from X and Y. Then, multiplexer is working as MUX. Then, we are connected here with the swap and selection by this selection x and y we we select that uh, register xr and yr by those registers we can generate the output by load xr and load x uh, and load yr are used for uh, those registers to take the input and then after that the subtraction is generated and then the comparator comparator is to know if the value is greater than or lesser than if the sub uh, and then the subtraction result is moving on as an input to the multiplexer section that is how the multiplexer section knows what the result uh, comes out from this is the difference between hardware control unit and microprocessor control unit this is speed is operation is high and the microprocessor is low this is more complex structure but microprocessor is simply structured it can be used for implementing in sys machine but it is not always necessary to implement in sys machine the microprocessor control unit This differentiation is also very important between classical method and one-shot method. You can have a snap of this one. In this section, you have minimum hardwares, and it is the uh, algorithmal uh, approach. And in this one-shot section, it is the met uh, it is the heuristic method. In classical method, it is it is less expen uh, expensive and in one shot method it is more expensive there are some dis uh, difference between classical method and one shot methods this one is the important section of for your examination the basic structure of microprogram control unit in this section we have control fields and address fields Control is for the controlling section and address field is for the memory location. By this diagram we can see that here CM is for the control memory section and here control fields are for the selection. First we generate the MUX, the multiplexer section, then go to the CMAR, then we will move on to the control memory section by having uh, from those outputs we can connect those lines <laughs> and fix the output then the control signal is generated and finally we get the output
In this section, we discuss about each address selection and the row selection on techniques. These sections are also very important for your examination. You can have a, at a glance of them. Horizontal microstructure and vertical microstructures are also important for your examination point of view. Have a snap of this one. This one is a long format and this one is a short format. Here are some memory types. CPU registers, main memory, secondary memory, cache memory. Here are some descriptions of them. Here are some description of CPU register and main memory. Main memory is also known as the primary memory. Here are some points on secondary memory and then about the cache memory. That is how the memory is situated in your computer. The secondary memory which is known as the f hard disk is connected with the main memory. Then the main memory is connected with the cache which is known as cache level 2. Then cache level 2 is also connected with the cache level 1. Then it is connected with the register file which is situated in the CPU section. This is the diagram of how the memory exists in your computer. This diagram is for the conceptual model of random access memory or RAM. In this section you can see that here we have some chips or register and in that we have some store locations. Those store locations are accomplished with those registers or chips. In this section we have this, di uh, this uh, section works like as a uh, CD or floppy. When the read write head is situated here, then it moves and it takes the storage location. That is how the st uh, it moves and storage location and data is defined by fetching and execution. That is how the uh, CD and the uh, floppy disks are works. We have already discussed about ROM, CD-ROM. PROM and etc. So we are now sk skipping these topics. Th that's for the computer.